You know, when the older generation said that we needed to teach the children their history, I'm not entirely sure that this was what they had in mind. to the Kiki. My name is Chris Sizzle. Thank you so much for joining me again this week for the Kiki, where we talk about everything RuPaul's Drag Race and RuPaul's Drag Race adjacent. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, my name is Chris. Hi. Welcome. Uh, pull up a pew, get yourself a drink, make yourself comfortable, and hit that subscribe button so that you will get updated every time a new Kiki comes out. Um, so, yeah, first things first, I should apologise, really, that this hasn't been uploaded as quickly as it could have been, um, mostly because I've been on holiday. So the idea was that I was going to still be able to film and upload while I was away. And unfortunately, we hit a couple of snags when we were on holiday. The accommodation wasn't quite up to scratch. We had to move. Anyway, long story short, I have been without Wi-Fi and basically a phone signal for about a week. So, um, yeah, withdrawal symptoms much. But I am now back and I am now getting back on it. We have this episode of the Kiki to catch up on. We have episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars to cover. So I've got my little pads. Let's go do this. So, first things first, Tatiana has gone. I am beyond devastated because that bitch is fierce. I actually had predicted to her to win, um, so that's a bit annoying, but never mind. So, um, yeah, I'm very much like... <clears throat> so, we are going straight in on this. So we've got the history of the World main challenge. This is actually quite an interesting main challenge because they all have to represent a different character throughout the history of the world, of the world's greatest women, basically. And um, I think it's... Interesting, because the queens have pre-allocated their uh, roles, it seems. I, I haven't had, like, a proper confirmation from this, but it seems that the roles were predetermined because, obviously, the queens had to bring their own gown. So, like, Ginger having that Catherine the Great outfit, well, she wouldn't have brought also Joan of Arc and Eve and all that kind of stuff, would she? So, predetermined. Interesting. Makes me wonder who the other queens had been who've left, what they had been assigned, and how that would have worked um, in the, the musical. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, that's um, certainly interesting. Um, but although I did hear that uh, apparently Tatiana was originally Joan of Arc, was that right? No, she was, someone was Joan of Arc or someone was Princess Diana and it was changed. I mean, I, I don't even know anymore, but, <coughs> oh sorry, I'm just still getting over my cough, do apologise. Um, so yeah, that was just interesting anyway. So, um, oh, you know what, it wasn't really that interesting until we get to the rehearsals, because like, the girls are getting ready, Liz is feeling her kookiness and fantasy and all that kind of stuff, um, which is funny, um, but you can't really review it too much, can you? Um, so let's get to the nitty gritty. So, um, the rehearsals, right, the rehearsals are quite intense, because the choreographers are like going in on them, they're like, you're not doing this right, and I'm like... Honey, if you're not a dancer and you're saying step, step, chasse, and pivot, and, blah, 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 and all these weird words that I don't know, and they make it sound as if you should know, and I'm like, but these bitches ain't got seven years of, you know, ballet and two years of jazz tap behind them, so cut a bit of slack. Anyway, um, so yeah, this whole thing where they're saying like detox could have been funnier, I'm like, how funny can you honestly make step, step, and turn? Like, really, I, maybe I'm just missing the point because I'm not a dancer. Like, hello, six foot four, size nine feet. Mm -mm, it doesn't really work. I'm, I'm, no. So that is out of the question. I probably could never go on RuPaul's Drag Race. Even though I've got a really cool character if I did drag, but I don't do drag. So, yeah. So anyway, so we get back to the workroom. Um, because, yeah, the rehearsals are the rehearsals. And it's just like, the choreographers are being a bitch. And the others are struggling. There we go. That's that summed up. Um... There's an interesting bit here that I've got written down about Fifi and Detox and how Fifi was saying that like Detox didn't like her when season four came out because apparently Fifi was coming for someone and then Detox was like, oh yeah, because you know, when you come for our sisters, we stick together or something. And it was just like an odd comment. To, I've, I've got written here, our girls, um, about California and West Hollywood. And I'm like, the conversation was originally about Alaska and Fifi and how Fifi had come for Sharon, and then because of that, Detox got involved. But Detox saying, like, our girls, well, as far as I'm aware, Sharon wasn't from California or West Hollywood. She moved, I think it was, like, was it Pittsburgh? Or somewhere? Like, not there. So I'm, I get the feeling that that conversation 
from Detox's side was maybe about someone else. Um, I'm wondering if Fifi, you know, four years ago, whatever, had come for a different queen. Um, I'm not 100% sure because I wasn't that involved in the background of the queens and stuff back then. Um, but I'm just wondering if, like, she came for, like, Willem or something and Detox, when they were talking, had backed up Willem and then they've used that bit of conversation um, <coughs> to kind of, I don't know, make Fifi look bad or something. Um, I want to talk about Fifi, but I might save that for next week because obviously I've seen episode four already um, of, of RuPaul's Drag Race and um, I do want to talk about Fifi, She's, but I'm going to go into it properly next episode, right? We're going to get into it properly next episode. So stay tuned for that. But um, the, the edit that Fifi is getting is quite a harsh one already. Uh, even if we're just talking about episode three, the tension is being built, the looks are being made, the editing is being thrown together to make it look like it's her against the world, or at least her against Alyssa. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of making me feel a bit, like, uncomfortable, because I, I don't know, I, I just, I do think that Fifi is trying her best, but we will get into that next time, so make sure you, once you've watched this one, you click for that one. Um, because we're going in. Because today, darlings, we're going in, right? I'm going in today, and next week I'm going in. So, yeah, I probably should have said that at the beginning. Be like, yeah, we're going in! But um, I, I don't think that far in advance. I don't plan things out. I'm a bit more like... Well, I try and make it more organic, but I don't know. I've never really been, like... Whatever. You know what? I'm, I'm not even talking straight. Just ignore me. So, uh, well, not ignore me properly because I want you to watch the rest of this video because this is fun. Um, I think it's fun anyway. I hope you're having... Are you having fun? Let me know if you're enjoying these. Um, so, Alaska, right. Okay, so while we're talking about Fifi and blah, 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 Alaska mentions that the hate that Fifi got after season four was just wrong and that the hatred that has, like, built up over the last few years in terms of Drag Race has gotten out of hand. Um... And she was saying that, um, you know, if you are calling someone the monster and you're saying all these horrible things, maybe you're the monster. And I think that's very apt and very appropriate because, um, you know, we've seen it a lot with uh, Fifi, we've seen it a lot with Roxy, we saw it with Jasmine Masters, uh, Candy Ho. They all got a lot of backlash uh, from the public after their episodes, or after their seasons, I should say. And... You know, some of the death threats and having, you know, threatening to throw acid in someone's face and, you know, being horrible and, you know, abusive. I'm just like, mm -mm, no, I, you know, you're allowed to like queens, but don't dislike the ones to the point where you're making their life a misery. It's not why they go on Drag Race. It's not why they do the job they're doing. They shouldn't have to put up with this. So don't like create hatred, you know, we're supposed to be a community of everybody say love and all that kind of stuff and if you're spewing this kind of hatred, it's, you know, horrible, I mean, it's, it's one thing to kind of be critical of someone and be like, you know what, I don't like you, that's fine, but don't start doing death threats, don't start coming for them constantly and making their life a misery because it's just not worth it, it's not nice. Um, so Alaska is on point and I think that again is very relevant to episode four because Again, I will go into it, but we are seeing it happen all over again with All Stars. So it's like, okay. So we get to the main show, right? This is amazing. This was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to go through them. Um, like, just the whole production in general was just really, really good. It was very catchy, very well put together. So Alaska, she missed a bit of the lip sync, let's be real. She missed a little bit of the lip sync. Her outfit was very basic. Um, so there wasn't much to kind of be critiqued on on that in the same way that some of the others were. Um, wondering if that was an editorial decision to kind of, you know, give Alaska a little bit of help. Because let's be real, a lot of this is being geared towards Alaska. Like the edit is very pro-Alaska. And I have, you know, no issue with Alaska. She's a fantastic queen, but she doesn't need to be given any free passes. She knows she can do well regardless. Um, but I was just wondering if maybe, maybe I'm just being, you know, tinfoil hat moment, pr proper conspiracy theory, but I'm, I'm just like, maybe they were just thinking, well, if we give her a non-existent outfit, then we can't critique her on it, because it's basically three bay leaves, and I'm just like, honey, that does not an outfit make. Um, Fifi 
was really funny. That was really funny. I'm Helen of Troy! I thought it was just like, that just alone, whoever came up with it, I'm assuming Lucian, that was just brilliant. And I think she did a really, really good job of kind of portraying this crazy Helen of Troy. Um, Ginger, that was really funny. Um, the whole s s Russia is my stomping ground. I love that Katya was under her feet at that point and kind of pushed it down because obviously Katya does the Russian stick, but, or stick, shtick. Let's try, you know, I can't talk properly. Um, although it is interesting that, you know, as Katya said, that she, Ginger got the Russian character who, you know, used to shag horses um, and not Katya. Um, but, you know, whatever, hung like a something. So, detox, that was very good. It was quite emotive. You know, she was kind of like creating the facial expressions to go with the exasperation, what a good word, um, of Marie Antoinette. Um, although, I will get into this, but the outfit was a little bit crazy. Um, Alyssa, that was brilliant. Like, bang, bang, loved it. Like, that was absolute genius. Um, really, really fun. And I think she really played it up well. Um, Roxy, that was, she was channeling, like, that was good, she was channeling, but there wasn't a whole lot you could do with that character, there wasn't a whole lot that they could give her, because don't forget, like, all these queens, the steps were predetermined, so, you know, I don't think it was as interesting as some of the other routines, and the same goes for Katya, because, um, also, side note before I get into Katya, um, phrasing, someone dropped cake during her bit, so, because I think they do these shows, like, twice to get, like, the best kind of edit, um, or well, the performances twice, and uh, yeah, it seems in one of the performances someone had dropped some cake. If you look at Katia's performance right on the stage, on the left, there's the chunk of cake. So Marie Antoinette has obviously just gone a little bit crazy and just been like, let them all eat cake! Um, so, yeah, um, but yeah, Katia's dance wasn't that interesting, let's be real. Like, it was not that interesting. Um, her outfit I thought was actually alright. Yes, I know it wasn't like crazy poofy sleeves, but I can let that go. Um, yes, I know they wanted a 5,000 foot train, but bitch, how are you supposed to dance in that? And the hair, I thought the hair was on point. Oh, we needed more wispy. Mm, bullshit. But um, she did well in the background of when she was doing the other bit, so I think she still managed to like steal the spotlight. So I don't think she was like the, the worst, but I think the, the odds were kind of stacked against her in the sense of she was told to do those dance moves, and then the judges are like, I don't think you did very well in terms of your... It wasn't as interesting as the others. I'm like, well, when you're given that, and you're told to do that, what are you supposed to do? Anyway, so <coughs> we go to the runway, and um, like Alaska's blue cotton candy couture fantasy... Ah! Was, actually, I quite liked it. I think maybe the makeup could have been taken to the next level, but I actually thought it was really cool. I know Michelle was like... I thought you were going to go in, but I liked it. I thought it was okay. Um, Fee Squared's was amazing. Like, C-3PO. I was so good. Like, C-3PO on a bender, you know, with the gun, living her World of Warcraft fantasy. I, yeah, I, that was phenomenal. Like, well done. Really well done. Um, Ginger, not feeling it. Not going to lie, wasn't feeling it. I think it would have been more effective if the lights had been dimmed. Um, apparently she asked for them to, and the production team said no, um, but oh well. Um, Detox, this was amazing, like, sex toy from the future, this was so good. Um, something very different, and it's interesting to see how Detox's drag has evolved to this point, that she walks out like a, you know, a steel mannequin um, meets Fifth Element. It's, it's really, really interesting, and I thought it was very cool. Um, Alyssa's, oh my god, it was like Cleopatra meets Lady Gaga while in a K-hole. It, it, it was just freaking mental. Um, absolutely mental. I, yeah, it was like aluminium foil, like attached to her shoulders, like twisted up. Even Derek Barry's taking tips. And I'm like, mm, you know, you've got issues when that's happening. Um, Roxy, I liked it. I have to admit, I liked this. It reminded me actually a little bit of Latrice Royale's outfit from the season four promo this is this is getting like inception time like yeah so if you remember latrice i think it was latrice her look was really similar to that the paint was kind of similar um and yeah the outfit and everything i i was definitely getting flashbacks um katya it oh my god right so it was like princess amadala going to luke's bar mitzvah it, it yeah she was serving proper down um, I, it was, it wasn't that great, to be honest, when you compare it to, like, what Fifi brought and what Alaska brought. 
and detox. I mean, it just wasn't on the same level. Um, sorry, Katya, I love you, but it wasn't good, I think. It was kind of quirky, and she could have, like, maybe camped it up to kind of create the character a bit more, but mm, I don't know. So, the critiques, right. <laughs> Guys, this is the moment, okay? This is where I'm going in, because I have issue with these critiques now. Um, we all know that the editing is a bit odd. Uh, we kind of just accept it. You know, you've got to create good television. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, don't take things out of context and don't manipulate. Like, just use what you've got and make it kind of real. Like, I know it's supposed to be reality, but I don't want fake reality. I kind of just want the competition to be real. Um, let me explain. So I have written here. There was some tea that was on Reddit of uh, Fifi and Tatiana at a bar showing of the thing, and they sort of talked about it a bit. Um, apparently, the this is fashion comment wasn't given to Alyssa, it was actually given to Detox, but they decided to move it to Alyssa for some reason. Um, then, apparently, the jibe to Ginger from Carson about having to take Ritalin to kind of take it all in wasn't supposed to be to Ginger, it was actually to Alyssa. Um, and then <coughs> um, the critique about um, Katya, about how it kind of wasn't like real enough. And again, as I explained about like the sleeves and the hair and stuff, and they're like, oh, it just wasn't like, you know, true to life. I'm like, well, first of all, I don't think Annie Oakley had that kind of hair. But when they're coming for Cartier saying it's not real, and then on the same stage you've got detox in like Marie Antoinette, neon 80s rave, methamphetamine, extravaganza fantasy. Honey, they didn't have those kind of drip dry fabrics in those days. No, but they didn't have that kind of colour. That wasn't the styling of it. Yes, the look was amazing, and I really, really liked her performance, and I thought the look was cool. That was not realness. Like Marie Antoinette did not look like that. No way did she look like that. But I don't have a problem with that in the same way that I don't have a problem with Cartier's critique. So if you're going to critique one for not being real enough and then you've got, you're letting someone pass with highlighter neon colours as Marie Antoinette, like, just, it, it just seems a bit like too varied, you know, stick to a thing. I, I can't think of the word, really bad. But just like be, um, Standard, maybe. Um, so I just, yeah, I just felt that it was a bit of an unfair critique to kind of come for someone like that when really all the others were open to interpretation and they did use that interpretation to kind of play with it. So, yeah, I just, I, I had a problem with that. And again, the, the whole idea of the editing and stuff, I get that you have like two days worth of footage to condense into 40 minutes, but don't take things out of context. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair because then you're always going to be scared of what you're going to say. And it basically kind of means it's a bit of a potluck in terms of the competition. Like if the production don't really like you or they need to create a villain, then they'll just create one. Um, what I would rather see is a competition that was um, edited fairly. And I don't, because I don't care who wins. Like honestly, I don't care because they're all fantastic queens. And if someone deserves to win, then they deserve to win. And they don't deserve the hate and the death threats. I mean, honestly, it's for God's sake, it's drag. It's drag race. Get a grip if you're going to be sending death threats and hatred like that. Like, it's one thing to be like, mm, I don't really like them, what they did. But don't be that horrible. Um, be nice, for God's sake. It doesn't cost anything. Smiles are free, everybody. Hashtag smiles are free. Anyway, um, so, yeah, and then... <coughs> I had issue with this anyway. And then watching next week's episode has made me even more annoyed about it. Why was it only a bottom two? Guys, anyone tell me? Why was it only a bottom two? Um, it should have been a bottom three. As far as I'm concerned, it's the way they've been doing it. Um, unless they were then gonna carry on with just two. And I was like prepared for that. I was like, well, if it's just gonna carry on as two, then okay, I get it. But if they've not, you know, next week was a bottom three. Well, why the hell was there a bottom two? And the only thing I can think of was that, because really, when we think about it, who would have taken the bottom three spot other than Katya and Ginger? It would have been a toss-up between 
Alaskan Roxy. Um, I don't know who would have slipped, maybe Roxy, maybe Alaska, but I'm just like, I don't think the production would have given the possibility of putting Alaska down there, so they just decided to have a bottom two. I think the bottom two thing was arbitrary, if, especially if next week was bottom three, like, that doesn't make any sense. So something wasn't right there. Maybe they were just trying to force Ginger out of the competition. Maybe they were hoping that, you know, someone would kick off Katya. I don't know, but I just felt it was a very weird choice, basically. There, there was something about it that wasn't quite right. Um, I don't know what you guys think if I'm just being overdramatic here, but I'm, I don't know. I just want to see fair competition. I think really what all my issue is with the critiques on the main stage, with the editing, with the bottom two, I just want to see a fair competition. And I don't really feel it's currently as fair as it could be. I think there, you know, obviously, as I said, I understand the, the, the requirements of editing and the requirements of creating good television, but you have to kind of, I think, weigh up how far you might be going, um, what kind of personas you're creating and risking, you know, how fair the competition is. So um, I think that's really ultimately my biggest gripe is um, I think it could just be done a little bit more fairly. Um, but yeah, so there they go back. <coughs> it, before I go into the next bit, am I off base here? Am I the only one thinking this? I, I just want to know, like, I'm trying to be honest. I don't like being that critical, but I don't know. I just, I, I just feel that this is, you know, quite important. This isn't just like, some wannabes that are talentless and trying to get on a reality show and you know like bachelorette and just like fall in love with prince charming or something it's like you know that could be fun tv but i think everyone's kind of aware of what they're going in for but this is it's supposed to be like about their careers and stuff there's there's a there's a there's a, there's a, there's a post game here um which can have an effect so um anyway they go back into yeah let me know let me know so i'm a bit scatterbrained today i don't know why let me know in the comments below is anyone else thinking this just want to know um, so they go back to the deliberation of the workroom. Roxy and Fifi are questioning correctly whether Alyssa would stick by the rules that they've established and kick off Katia because they all agreed that whoever uh, was in the whoever got the worst critiques would be kicked off, um, and they were right to think that Alyssa might change it up um, because she does. Um, so I mean, it's certainly drama filled, but um, yeah, so. <coughs> they, they're talking to each other, who should I keep, who should I stay? Katya's completely resigned to the fact she's going home. Ginger's like, I'm here to fight, I want to win. And Alyssa's like, that's what I want to see, it's great, that's good. And the whole editing is suggesting that she's going to keep Ginger. Um, so we go to the lip sync. Um, I actually thought Detox did a better job. Um, I thought her lip sync was tighter. I thought her dance moves were kind of appropriate for the character that she'd conceived. And I think they worked with the song. Um, although it was a close one, I just think Detox did slightly better because Alyssa's lip sync wasn't quite right and she kept playing with her hair too much because obviously I don't think it was styled quick, like, correctly because she quickly changed it. And a lot of the splits and stuff with the leg kicks, I was just like, it doesn't seem to fit the song, but whatever, it's no big whoop, to be honest. Um, but then when Alyssa's like, kicking someone off, um, the way that she was talking was like she was praising Ginger, saying, like, you know, when I looked in their eyes, I could see the fire and... Um, you know, it's what I wanted to see and, and then suddenly she kicks off Ginger and I'm like, but she was the one with the fire, not Katya. Katya completely resigned. Despite the fact that I love Katya, I'm happy Katya is here. Don't get me wrong, I think Katya is phenomenally brilliant. But I don't know, um, what Alyssa was even saying didn't seem to fit with her decision to kick off Ginger. So, because Ginger definitely had some fight in her. So. Um, either way, I'm happy Katya's still there. It's a shame Ginger's gone, but obviously someone's got to go home. I think everyone, a lot of people, I think, wanted Katya to stay. Um, but obviously it throws up a whole new dynamic because Alyssa went against the grain. But maybe it was a strategic thing because she knows if she kicks off Katya, she's going to be hated like crazy. So, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she votes off Ginger. And Ginger goes home and then is told, like, Ooh, girl, you can get your revenge! And she's like, oh, I'm going to kick off Alyssa. Here we go. It's... It's getting real. So, um, yeah, that was kind of like my, my thoughts. I know it was probably not as funny um, this week as perhaps in other weeks. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm that funny. Um, but I just, there was something that's been bothering me for a week. And since I've been on holiday, it's been kind of like building. And I just wanted to get it off my chest about the whole, 
keeping it fair, um, you know, even in the competition, the, the editing, um, the the you know, given the roles, everything. There's there's sort of an element of like something's not quite right here. Um, maybe it could be done a little better. It's not certainly not like the worst thing ever. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is absolutely atrocious. It, I just think it could be slightly tweaked. Um, but maybe I'm off base. But especially with having just watched today season uh, episode four um, and the hatred that's kind of coming out from that, it's making me feel a bit uncomfortable. And I was like, I just kind of want to get it off my chest. Um, that what's happening is creating an environment that is perhaps detrimental to um you know the community and to the show as well because you know if people are like getting this angry about like something that they like someone they've never met or something that they don't really know much about in terms of there's obviously a lot more that goes on behind the cameras than we see in the 40 minute segment so sometimes like people need to take that into account um you know I'm just like maybe, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to get off my chest. So don't think I'm being like completely horrible or um, nasty because I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just trying to be critical. Um, and yeah, I hope that makes sense. I hope, yeah, I, do, I just hope, I, I hope I'm making sense. I'm, I'm a little bit discombobulated. What a fantastic word um, because I've, I've been traveling a lot so much the last sort of two weeks. So I'm, I'm now back at home and I'm like, what's going on? Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you agree. Let me know um, if you think I'm off base. Um, but yeah, I just think there could be slight tweaks maybe um, just to fill in some holes. So like a very good sort of, you know, poly filler for when you have a facelift or something just fill in those cracks anyway um but yeah that is everything for this week guys thank you so much for joining me this week thank you if you've made it this far um please as always subscribe uh drop me a thumbs up and please leave me a comment you know i love hearing the, the feedback and i love seeing you guys talk to each other and getting the kiki started and us all gossiping and chatting about it because i love this show so much um and this season has been fantastic entertainment um and cannot wait to see what happens in terms of the revenge. Um, but yeah, let me know again your thoughts about this week, um, you know, in regards to anything, as always. Um, and also you can follow me on social media. I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Chris Says It. You should find me um, and follow me on there. And also, um, just let you know, I have a Patreon account. So if you wanted to um, support me on Patreon and get access to the Kiki 24 hours early and all my other videos then head on over there to find out some more information uh, it's patreon.com forward slash Chris says it all the relevant information of everything I've just said about is in the word down bar below but uh, I think that's everything so until next time guys um, be good be safe keep out of trouble stay fierce and I will see you guys later take care guys love you bye Mwah.